morning. You coming in then? Good morning, and what a show we've got lined up for you today. I'll be joined all morning by the busted bassist who's now treading the boards in the West End. Yes, Matt Willis will be dropping by a little hey, bit later. Hey, hey. <coughs> Looking forward to that. And I'll be sharing some brilliant recipes of my own with leftover pumpkin in today's little masterclass. class. And my food adventures are taking me to Guernsey, where I'll be enjoying some classic French cooking and serving up crab beignets on the beach. And I'll be talking waffles as we take another dive into the world of food trucks. And if that wasn't enough, then I'll be joined throughout all the morning and we serve some amazing food by this fella over here. It's the genius, Mr. Atul Kutcher. Yay! Thank you. And you, welcome to the house. What are you going to be cooking for us then? Because all your food's amazing. What are you bringing with us? Well, I, I know you like fish. Yep. So I thought I'll bring a beautiful fish curry to you. We call it Kanishka South Indian fish curry. Right. And I've used entire North Sea this time. Right, OK. I got some red mullet, I got uh, sea bass, I got some prawns, some right. scallops and some is, is that clams. A, is that a coconut-based one with it been in the south or not? It's a coconut-based one. Right, OK. And it's, it's quite easy, James. Very simple ingredients. Uh, people can recreate it in their houses easily. It makes easily. it look quite easy. That's it is problem, easy. It is <laughs> exactly. Right. We're kicking things off today uh, with another fish dish. I'm going to do a flatbread with a little uh, mackerel sambal. So our first thing I'm going to do is get on and do the flatbread and get that started, really. Classic flatbread. We've got flour, we've got water, a little bit of yoghurt. And all I'm going to do is just mix this all together like that to start with. A good pinch of salt, really. I mean, you're used to doing this anyway, Arthur. Yeah. It's such a quick way of doing it, isn't it? Flatbreads are amazing, yes. But just the flatbread is so, so quick and easy. You don't need any yeast, nothing. And we just bring this all together with a little bit of cold water. That's it, really. Fantastic. But a little bit of yoghurt. You can mix and match the spices if you want in there. You can give us some spices that you can put in here. You could put, uh, well, a little yeah. bit of black onion seeds, or you could put a few bits of those in it, but... Toasted cumin? Yeah, anything. toasted cumin. It's tied up to you. But we're just going to mix this together. And I'm going to use this as a base. And I'm going to serve it with... I mean, because you're cooking this amazing fish. I'm cooking a fish which is not from a million miles away from here, down on the south coast, really. <laughs> it's amazing. Mackerel. It's, it's one of the best fish I, I find, really, all year round. Um, but it's all around the UK. That's the great thing about it. But fresh mackerel is, is absolutely delicious. But what you want to do with this flatbread is you don't want to make it too dry. And all you do is you, you don't want to overmix it, doing it by hand. You see how quickly it just yeah. keeps, takes to put together. But you bring it all together like that, and you've got your nice little flatbread. Done. Beautiful. Easy as that. We're going to just quickly wash my hands, and I'm going to use this as a little base. So think of it like a, a pizza base, really. And I'm going to use it for some vegetables, some, some mackerel, but also some amazing sambal, which we've got over here. So. Well, I'm sort of, sort of not even rolling this out, really. You almost just pin it out, really. You don't want to roll it out, just sort of flatten it out, really. I'm going to use this as a base for some of these amazing ingredients over here. So I'm hoping, uh, which you can do, because I can see her on screens right now, uh, by the power of the internet, we can go live to London to speak to Tana Sivarsambu. Is that how you pronounce it, Tana? Yes, it is. From Rossi Foods, uh, to talk about this amazing product that you've got over here. Now, Tana, welcome to the show, first of all. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. Um, I've spotted this around food festivals over the year that I've been working and, and out and about for a couple of years. I've seen this at several food festivals, this, this product that you've been developing it here. So tell us about how it all started um, and, and why we ended up with the, ju the, the jars that we got on here. How did it start for you? Hi, hello, hello, James. Hello, at all. Uh, it all started uh, with um, me doing some projects in Sri Lanka. Uh, since um, tsunami in 2004, I've been doing some projects. And um, in one of the visits to Sri Lanka, I met some farmers who were struggling to get their produce to the market. And they were literally just putting tractors over their produce. And it was so, um, so sad to see that. And I thought, you know, we, we got to do something. We can't be wasting food um, just like that. So that's when the concept for Rusi started. Uh, but then it took like three to four years for, for me to test the product, test the market, get it ready to be on shelves. And um, yeah, that, that's how it came to but be. This is, I mean, this, you, weren't, you weren't involved in food by, by your business. You're, you're an accountant by business. Uh, how how did you end up sort of setting up a bit? Well, see, you know, looking after the figures is one thing, but but <laughs> but making a food company is another thing entirely. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, but a foodie by heart. So uh, it was. I mean, um, I got the inspiration from my mother. She's a great cook. 
So um, we've always tried that recipes, new things at home. So when, when I saw this, I mean, it wasn't hard for me to just think like, okay, this is what I need to do. And of course, my accountancy helped me to put the business together. And then you've got now what well, started out as nothing to 17 different products, but there's an amazing storyline. Before we get into the products as well, you, you're, you're actually still working with the farmers. There's about 100 different farmers that you're working with over in Sri Lanka that are involved That's in the right. produce. I mean, yes, yes. So, so Rusi started as a, um, a brand with a purpose, so we wanted to help farmers. So from day one, we've been working with the farmers, trying to understand um, the seasonality, the produce, and how we can bring that into products. So at the moment, we've got 140 farmers in our group and fishermen as well. We work with about 20 fishermen. Uh, we buy the produce direct from them. And uh, with the farmers, we have actually brought them together uh, in a digital platform, in an app. So now I know where the produce is coming from. So if I say we're starting a batch of uh, the Brinjal Mojus, um, I know which farmer has got the stock ready for me. So we've, we've all got it connected electronically. You're, you're venturing into Atoll's world now, are you? Really? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's so fascinating. It is a fascinating subject. I mean, I love Indian cookery altogether. I didn't know much about Sri Lanka. Is that, that must have been quite difficult when you were first starting it off, really. It's that people not knowing and, and not really understanding what what the produce is that that's right yeah because um it, it kind of you know the, the the question i get very asked quite often is is it like indian um it, it's got closest resemblance to south indian but uh in the sense there's a bit of a mix between the far eastern cooking and the south indian cooking uh the far eastern like the thai and the indonesian they use more fresh ingredients like the lemongrass, um, rumpe or pandan leaves and coconut. And the South Indian with the um, chilies and the coriander coming and roasting the, veg the, the spices together. So the Sri Lankan one's got a bit of both. We use the roasted spices and then we use the fresh ingredients and the coconut as well. So, so, so I'm just, I'm taking something, you mentioned the coconut. I've got an ear, I've got this red coconut sambal. What, what? What is the difference between what makes it a sambal to start with? What what is a sambal? What what is it? Um, sambal, as I understand, is a is a chili base. So you have the Indonesian um, sambal, like the sambal olik, which is like a chili paste. But in Sri Lanka, sambal is more with the chili with ingredients uh, like the coconut. So the red coconut sambal is a is a staple of Sri Lankan food. I mean, if you go to any home, any any restaurant, any hotel. It, they, they use sambal, you know, there can't be Sri Lankan food without the red coconut sambal. So it's basically chilli and onions ground into a paste and then added with fresh coconut. Well, so it's, it's used more, more like a, uh, a condiment or it's, it's, a, it's an ingredient in the meal? It's more like a condiment, a relish, and it's um, mostly had at breakfast and me as well, like when I first came into London, like, you know, what do you have for breakfast? What do you put on your toast? You know, if you don't like, uh, if you don't want to start your day with a jam or a peanut butter, what do, you, what do you do? You know, Marmite, maybe Marmite, no. But what we Sri Lankans do is just put sambal on. So you're in your buttered toast, you have sambal and that's your breakfast. That's it. I'm taking all the leftover bottles today. <laughs> well, I mean, we've got a vast selection over here, but you've got, you've got 17 different ty types of, I mean, I've seen some over here, we've got some with tuna i mean some have got fish in it some have got is it is it a little fried fish as well i've seen in one of them as well you've got chili bases so you've got a big selection here Yes, so we, we started with the vegetarian version, so all our sambals and chutneys are vegan, actually. And then, I mean, Sri Lankan cuisine um, has got a lot of fish in it because we, we are on an island surrounded by sea, so that so Sri Lankan food is not complete without fish. And uh, as, as much as supporting the farmers, I wanted to kind of um, give a, a stage to the um, fishermen as well because they go through a lot doing that so all our fish is caught, uh, used from our local fishermen bought direct from them so the um uh, the brinjal mojo has got fried sprats in them and the tuna charu is my own recipe uh it's a pickled pickled tuna um so unlike the um the european pickles you get th this pickle has got a lot of spices a lot of flavors in them it is but, i mean we've, so... we've just tasted a few of them there is a there, there, 
There's one thing for sure. There's a bit of kick in this, isn't there, really? <laughs> chili, chili wise. You obviously like your spice. Yes, yes. Sri Lankan food has is well known for its spiciness. Um, need to have a bit of kick in everything. Like even the chutneys, the sweet chutneys have got an underlying uh, chili tone to them. I'm going to take this out now so you can see it. But all I've done is take the flatbread. We've taken some of this this lime pickle. But look. Oh my God. But look at that. That's straight out of the oven. That's the best looking pizza I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Don't say it's a pizza. We've got, uh, we've got the Italians here next week. Oh, OK. But we've just got... <laughs> otherwise, they'll be properly telling me off. <laughs> uh, and then all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this oil, but over the top. But you see, I mean, that just looks... It's already a meal, just with some of this lime pickle as well. To so go this with is it. olive oil you're putting? Just a little bit of olive oil over the top. That's nice. Well, I just think that looks fantastic, just as it is. Not really a pizza. It's a flatbread. Uh, that's all it is. So this mackerel is now ready. Can then take this out. There's not going in one of the one of your ovens as well. You get no 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 hairs on your hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tandoori oven. Tandoori oven. But look, <laughs> you got the mackerel. Oh wow, that's looking uh, amazing. Uh, so all you've done is just take the little. I mean, that's just again. I've just used this coconut one that you've got on here, um, and then we're going to take the roasted veg, just char grilled. You can just pop them around it. Oh, that's beautiful. Just a few little bits of roasted vegetables with it. The meal on its own. So, yeah, you've got a nice little meal, but... Fantastic. This is... I, I remember... I remember going to the Caribbean, it's not the same, but it is the same, but the simplicity of stuff, just with a little bit of lime on, the fresh fish in tin foil, just reminded me, so I thought I'm going to do this sort of style That's dish, amazing. really, and serve it with a little bit of lime on the side. And that's your lot. So I wish you all the best of luck with the business. Thank you very much for a part of this. And, and I look forward to seeing you and your products at one of the many, many food festivals next year. But best of Thank luck you. with everything. Good luck, Tana. Thank you very much, Tana. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good Thank luck with you. everything. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. That looks amazing. Look at that. And there we have it. Two simple dishes cooked in a little wood-fired oven. At home, do it in your oven. But sort of 15 minutes, make sure it's cranked really, really high. That'll cook the, uh, the, the, the bread all the way through. And the fish takes about 10 minutes. Easy as that? Done. Beautiful. <laughs>
a little aperitif. Would you like a local rocket? Like it's a cider? That, yes. That's good for me. So how long have you been here? 17 years now with my husband. Right. Uh, we came here to learn English. Right. And then we didn't leave, ever. And how much has it changed over the years? My, my English or yeah, No, this place. We opened this place in 20, 2010. Right. OK, and then after we went one level up, so there's another level in 2013. So you keep expanding? Yes. It's actually uh, quite big, isn't it? You're deceiving on when you look yeah, on the corner. Yeah, you think it's, it's very small, but actually there's 150 seats. Wow. Yeah. That's big. We've got, we want to get something to eat as well. I think you should have some seafood tonight. That sounds pretty good. Uh -huh. And I think I could show you a table in the dining room. Yeah. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, buddy. It's great, isn't it? Delphine's husband, Michael, is head chef and he's promised us a meal to remember. Hi, Jens, how are you? Good evening. Wow, yeah, hello. Uh, how are you? Oh, wow. Yeah. So you've got some local oyster who come from uh, Justin, from the farm oysters. Right. Um, so every single day in the restaurants. you got some local lobsters, lovely big chunkers who just come as well. We've got some clams, we've got a few langoustines, fresh shell and prawns. So that's it, it's bon appétit. Enjoy, James. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey. Wow. This is a bit of a <coughs> right, Now that's a feast, eh? <laughs> start the top, start the bottom. Ah, let's have? mix it up, attack it. Let's go for it. I'm going to have right. some crab first. This is my kind of food, mate. Oh, man. Beautiful, huh? Ah, delicious. Absolutely, I need to try the oyster. They're good, very good. Yep. Hmm. I love it. Absolutely love it. There's a reason why this place is busy. It's so honest. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. So pure. It's a confidence of great ingredients. Mate, look at that lobster. Do you know, out of all these years I've been doing this, we constantly get asked about you know, what do chefs like to eat? Yeah. And people are always surprised, though, because it is. Just this? Yeah, finger food that you can pull apart. Oh, so, so good. Yeah. And you can't beat a seafood platter, especially when it's fresh from the sea. So I'm inspired to cook my own seafood dish with a French twist. Now, to follow on from that beautiful Plateau de Fouille de Mer that I had earlier, it was fabulous. I thought I'd do another French classic, beignets. Now, they can either be sweet or they can be savoury. It's simple as that. But I'm going to do these little crab beignets, savoury beignets, with a lemon mayonnaise. And it starts off with a simple choux pastry. Water, eggs, butter, obviously Guernsey butter. Now, you get that beautiful colour from it as well. Flour and a pinch of salt. So the first thing we do is dice the butter. Now, it's important to dice the butter, first of all, rather than just put it in as a big lump, because the recipe for this is measured, and it's really important that you concentrate on the measurement of water, because it's the water that causes it to puff up and cause it to rise when it's in the oven. Nice little pinch of salt in there. And while that's happening, we're going to do another classic sort of garnish with this, mayonnaise, that classic sort of French mayonnaise. Really simple. We're just going to take some eggs, I don't need the whites, just a couple of yolks in here. There we go. They're going to go in. A little bit of Dijon mustard. That's really the most important bit in terms of the flavour, apart from the little bit of lemon that we're going to put in there. So get this mixing first of all. And then the oil in a mayonnaise is always veg oil. It's never olive oil. It's veg oil. That's why it keeps it nice and white. Mix this all together and it starts to thicken up nicely. Because I'm going to put in the flavouring, which is lemon. Just going to use a little bit of lemon zest, a little bit of lemon juice. It'll just thin it down a bit. A touch of that. Black pepper. Nice pinch of salt. And that's your lemon mayonnaise made. Easy as that. Now, as this mixture starts to come up, that's why it's important to dice the butter beforehand, because what you're doing is you're waiting for that water to heat up and boil. And it, if you don't dice up the butter, what will happen is that water and the recipe that you've got will reduce down 
and the mixture will just end up being thick and tough and when it goes in the oven with a shoe pastry different it will be nice and light and fluffy so we've got some plain flour here as soon as this starts to come up to the boil pop in the flour and while it's on the heat mix it I have to say it's the first time I've ever made shoe pastry in a location like this but why not how beautiful is this place now you can allow this to cool slightly, but because I'm going to cook this almost straight away, really, and we've got some oil on here, so I'll just make sure this is nice and hot. What we can add is our eggs almost straight away, so we just pop in our eggs. Now, at home, if you're doing this with a dessert, just allow it to cool a little bit before you add the eggs, because otherwise they can cook. But if you mix it up quickly, you'll be fine. Now, at home, baking tray, piping bag, pipe them all out, in the oven, eclairs, done. But look, the French just, just do things, just right, look. Black pepper, salt, and then this is where you can add whatever you want. You could pick anything from that Plateau de Freedom Air earlier, stick it all in. Obviously, take the shells off first, that's not too good, but you can stick anything you want in there. Prawns, crab, lobster, shrimp, crevette gris, those lovely little brown shrimps that we get. Morecambe's famous for and the potted shrimps. But you're just going to take a little bit of parsley. Now, normally I would dice this a bit smaller, but we're by the side of a cliff and it'll all blow away, so I'm just going to quickly stick it in. That's going to go in there. A little bit of lemon. Touch of that in there, a little bit of lemon zest. That'll do. And then look at this crab. I've got some beautiful white crab oh, all around here as well. They get two different types of crab. You get the brown crab, but mainly you get the spider crabs. Massive, great long legs. But either way, bit of white crab meat, but also the dark crab meat, because the dark crab meat has got tons and tons of flavour in there. We're just going to put a bit of the dark crab meat in. Mix it all together like that. So you get a nice little paste. But that's kind of what you want. Look at this mixture. It's all mixed together with that shoe pastry. Easy as that. Then, then, this is the best bit, is you've got some hot oil on here. Now you can check it with a little bit of parsley. That's hot, your fighter. That's technically hot. Then what we're going to do, you get a spoon and you dip the mixture in here. And by dipping the spoon in the oil, the mixture doesn't stick to it. And we just fry these as little fritters. There's either some rare bird that suddenly landed in Guernsey or they're interested in food over here because we've got some visitors. Oh, look at these. Look at that. And they puff up like little fritters. See, just look at those beautiful little beignets while they're still warm, just pop them in the bowl like that. Wedge your lemon and a nice scoopful of the mayonnaise. Do you know what? I'm quite pleased with that. And there you have it, my tribute to France from the shores of Guernsey. Crab beignet with lemon mayonnaise. It's an amazing place to go visit as well. And if you get a chance and you're in Guernsey, go visit that restaurant as well. It's beautiful. Uh, still to come, we've got dishes on the way from chefs Atul Kutcher and Paul Ainsworth. And we'll be filling our plates as another food truck pulls into town a little bit later. But I'll see you back here in a few minutes when I'll be welcoming busted and West End star Matt Willis to the house. I'll see you in a bit.
Welcome back. Now, coming up, I'll be showing you how to make the most of your leftover pumpkins in this week's Little Masterclass. And chefs Atul Kutcher and Paul Ainsworth will be treating us to recipes of their very own a little bit later. But first, I'm here with a member of one of Britain's biggest ever pop bands who's gone on to have huge success on the star of stage and screen. It's the brilliant Mr Matt Willis! Yay! Now, Matt, uh, I thought, I thought, what can I cook for you? And I thought one of your favourite dishes is French onion soup, and it's one of my favourite dishes. That's what I'm going to do. Amazing! So I'm that's so excited. Where, so, so we're going to do a classic French onion soup. We're going to start it all off with what happens over here. French onions. Uh, there's, there's obviously your classic white onions. There's other onions called Roscoff onions. Okay. Roscoff has got like a purple hue on it. You know the famous right. onion sellers. Yeah. They used yep, to yep. call them Johnnies. That's what they used to be called. Yeah, that's right. generally that's what they used to be called. The blue and white striped shirt, bike, uh, selling onions on, uh, uh, in a string. They were Roscoff onions. Right. There's a big festival in, in, in France, uh, in the town of Roscoff for their onions, but we take normal onions like this, and what you want to do is thinly, thinly slice them, like that. Now, there's so many gadgets to stop you crying and all that kind of stuff, Stoon, spoon in your mouth, goggles. The best way to chop onions, really, is uh, to do it when you're tall. If you're short, okay. <laughs> if you're short, you're close to the onions, you'll cry a lot more. Simple as that. Okay, right? great. And quickly, I suppose. Well, quickly, I'll get somebody else yeah. to do it, Matt. It's yeah, always a good yeah. idea. That's yeah, yeah. why I was fine, but I'm just left my own over here, so I've just got to do it. But yeah, stand on a stool if you're a bit okay. short doing these. Uh, and we're going to slice these onions and then gradually, gradually cook them in the pan. I'm going to use a little bit of oil into this, but you can use a little bit of butter, but just a little bit in the pan and start these going. Now, first of all, congratulations on, on your career, and what a career. But first of all, I want to go back to when you were at school, because I, I find it... When I was reading about you last night, I get, we get a huge list, a, a, a biog about yourself as well. Right. It reminded me of sort of my childhood when I was at school. Not very good at school. Uh, no, school was not my, um, not my strong point, shall we say. I was never really... I was never really naughty or, or, or badly behaved. I just wasn't very good. Just I not didn't... interested, I don't think. I was, I was the same. Absolutely no interest. Was that... Was it dyslexia or...? Cos I had dyslexia. Was, was, I, was I wasn't think... diagnosed it. What was... Well, I got diagnosed with ADHD as an adult, and I think that kind of... Suddenly, school kind of made sense to me a little bit more, why I just had no focus and no kind of interest. Unless something really interested me, and then I'd be kind of zoomed, like, zoned in and focused on it, but it'd be so irrelevant to what they were trying to teach me at school. Well, I think yeah. the same thing. I found food, but I think you found the same thing when you went to stage school, because that was... I mean, that the, the Sylvia Young stage school, I mean, that particular time... Yeah. What a place to be involved. I mean, I couldn't... I mean, to be honest, I, I barely heard of the place. I kind of... Um, <laughs> I, sang in, um, I sang in a talent competition in a Haven holidays camp. Well, so your mum, your mum put you... My mum made me do it, and I sang Don't Look Back in Anger. Yeah. And, um, and like, I'd sung a few times, little bits that she made me sing at things. And, um, and so I sung at this talent competition. Someone in the crowd worked at Sylvia Young. Right. And um, someone just was on holiday there. And they were like, we're, they're holding um, auditions for a scholarship. Do you want to come How in? How old were you when you... I was 14. Wow. And I was like, yeah, absolutely, I'll do that, whatever that is. Not knowing you know, what it was. Not really knowing what it was. And I looked it up and I was like, all oh, right, that's where that... Spice Girl went, and this person went, and I was like, wow, I mean, this person, this person went. Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. time when you were there, it was Billy Piper, it was Amy Winehouse, I mean, it was just, yeah, yeah, they're all in my class. Yeah, it was a really, um, it was a really special time. It was a really, um, and suddenly, like you said, it's like I suppose it's like when you found cooking. It was like suddenly I found something that I could do, and I was good at, and I kind of enjoyed, and I found yeah. really kind of I just wanted to get better at it, and wanted to be at school rather than wanting to leave as soon as I possibly could. But it's interesting, we mentioned Billy Piper as well. It was the acting came first for mm. both of you, really, yeah, as opposed yeah. to the music side of it, really. Yeah, I mean, I fell in love with acting at school. I kind of never really, ever really intended to be in a band or, or a musician, really. It was just something that I did as a hobby and kind of in my spare time. And then me and James from, my, um, from Busted kind of met and we started writing songs. And then we auditioned for a couple of bands. And we both didn't get in. We were kind of both auditioning for different kind of bands around our area and stuff, and we, we weren't getting in. And, um, and then we did a couple of auditions in London, and we met, and we knew each other, and we were like, should we just try something ourselves? And he was like, yeah. And, um, and at the time, it was, we were kind of discovering this kind of American punk music that was massively influencing us. Yeah. And so we just kind of tried to take elements of that, take elements of pop music that we really loved and... Um, but out of two interests really... you're going to pick, you pick the toughest, really, in terms of music and music and acting, because the, the amount of 
like you say, the, the screen tests you go to, the, the, the interviews that you don't get, that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, for someone you've who's... You've got to be really quite, quite strong in terms of, you know, personality-wise... Yeah, I mean, to be keep knocking back and to keep getting up and going back again, you know. Yeah, I think that's kind of that's kind of come more towards the older I've got. I've kind of understood that a bit more. For someone who was so kind of self conscious and insecure, I picked the worst career possible, you know. But like as <laughs> yeah. as I've got older, I've kind of like learned to live with that and kind of that's just part of the part of the job now, you know. I kind of every audition I go for, I don't expect to get. But it seems so I, but I walk that's, in there that's the fun. opposite to what you're doing now, isn't it? Really, mm. because the acting side of it. You, 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 you've done the music side of it. Mm. We'll get onto that in a little bit later on. But, yeah. but the, the acting side of it, I didn't realise the amount of stuff that you've, you've done. Yeah, yeah, I've been lucky, man. I've been lucky. I mean, I've been working at it since I was, like, like I said, when I was 14, I went to Sylvia, so I started to get jobs. And, um, and, I, and I loved acting. Like, I didn't, I didn't really ever really think of myself as a musician. I always wanted to be an actor. Yeah. And, um, and music was kind of an accident, a very happy accident, which I'm very grateful for, yeah. but it was an accident. And, um, and yeah, I've been really lucky to do some great stuff. And, and obviously, we talk, we, whenever we, we get actors and, and, and they come onto the show, theatre is, is the thing that they absolutely love, a bit like musicians that play yeah. in live, yeah. that's the thing that they love. Tell us about the new thing you're involved in now, because mm. critical acclaim, I mean, that your part as well, is, amazing part but also the response from it from journalists and critics has been amazing for you yeah i mean it's been um i mean i kind of um i went to see the play um before i was in it and i was blown away by it it's called 222 it's a ghost story yeah and um and danny robbins wrote the script and it's it's just a it's basically a, a conversation with four people it's a four-hander in a room and it's in one room and it kind of just um the evening kind of takes a turn, shall we say. Yeah. And, um, and, and my character's kind of the antagonist. He kind of comes in, he's from a very different background to the rest of them. And he kind of, um, he's a working class guy and he kind of comes into this very middle class home and he kind of, you know, and everything kind of kicks off. So it's kind of a story about faith and belief and science and class and all these kind of things come to the head. You know, but like um, anything, it starts with a great script. That must have got you involved in it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you read the script, you really realise how great the writing is, you know, because there's so much in it. You know, and I think it's something you can watch again and again and again. You know, like we have people that come back six, seven times to kind of watch it, because you kind of get something new every time you watch it. And, um, and, and also, I think what's so good is the fact that it's a whole new cast every time. They breed a new life into the, into the play, and it takes a whole new kind of turn. Are you, are you kind of allowed... Well, I'll just put, put my soup in, in the, these little pots over here, but that's, this is almost the soup, soup done. That looks Are you amazing. allowed to put your own sort of input in it? Are you, do they give you a little bit of leeway? I suppose you have to, really. Because you have to, yeah. you then, the problem is you're judged by the previous person that, that did your part and that kind of stuff. Do you, well, are you allowed to put I, your own little I, twist I, on I, it? I try not to think too much about that stuff, but that is always, always in people's heads, I suppose. But, um, but for us, we walked in the rehearsal room, and I've done quite a lot of theatre where it's been a show that's been established and you walk into a part and you're told, right, you do this at this point, you walk here at this point, yeah. and you kind of deliver this line at this moment. But this was not like that. Right. You know, so we were allowed to kind of find this show ourselves. And it's um and, and the other actors I'm working with, like Felix Scott, Tamsin Carroll, Laura Whitmore, is absolutely stunning. She's amazing in this part. And it's um it's just a really great ensemble piece that kind of is just a joy to have. Well, we're gonna talk about that as well and the story and everything else. But this is this is that I looks think, incredible. I love the amount of cheese you're putting on. Well, I think with this, you've just got cheese and you got more cheese. Absolutely. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, I've had this in France and one restaurant, the Robin Lot. This, this was 95 euros in one restaurant. What? French Union, French Union suit in Paris. 95 euros. They don't even have it on the menu. And I think the reason why they don't have it on the menu is that they don't want you to sit on the seat on the Champs Elysees too much and watching people go by. So, so <laughs> that that, it's probably because it's costing right. more than 95 euros for a seat, I think. That's the one thing. But you just take your nice bit of cheese, you want a decent amount of, bit of cheese, and then pop it under the grill. So tell us yeah, about the storyline. Well, that. this is under here. So, we're, we're, there's just four of you involved in it. Tell us, tell us um, what, what it's all about. Yeah, so basically, it's a, it's a dinner party, and um, and uh, and Jenny and Sam are throwing a dinner party, and, and Sam's been away, and he's come back, and um, his friend from college, from university is coming over with a new boyfriend, who's me, yeah. and um, and my part, and 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 Tamsin, who plays Lauren, come in to this dinner party, and basically, it comes to light that they've had some ghostly things happening in the house. Yeah. And, um, and then it kind of, um, it then unfolds, you know, kind of, um, and it's kind of becomes much more about kind of science and belief, 
you know, and what kind of what you choose to believe and what you choose not to believe, you know, and, and, and how science comes into play and, you know, it's, um, and it's a bit of a battle. And you mentioned, Laura Whitmore, that people mm. are going to love Ireland. Isn't this the same thing with you when, you when you're doing that kind of acting? It must have been the same thing when you first started, once you left the band. Yeah. People, people almost pigeonhole you. It's like an actor doing a, a soap. It's the same... They almost... The privilege for the work, but almost think, well, do I get pigeonholed? You've got a choice. Yeah, Whether you carry on yeah. doing that or not. It must have been the same for you, though, didn't it, really? Yeah, I think I always kind of... Th I always kind of had a bit of um, the opposite of a chip on my shoulder, I suppose, when I walk in a rehearsal room, because I kind of... Initially, people think... You're going to be terrible. Was it you know, the people so you or yourself? You must have. You it's must. All, it's all me. It's but, all me. Because yeah. I'm the same thing. You, you, yeah. you don't feel as if you're good enough. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It must yeah. have been the same thing for, for you, really. What I was reading about, it's very similar to what I had a career, but total opposites. But yeah, yeah. A similar, similar sort of thing. Yeah, it's it's funny. You know, I think it's all it's all in your head, and so so I was always um, I always um felt like I had to outwork everyone. You know, so I'd always work harder. I'd always know everything before I walk in the room. I'd always try to be over prepared. But it is that thing. I think. I think people just think. Because you've done one thing, that's what you do. Yeah. And you stay in your lane. You know, whereas I'm like, why? Right. So all there is, your French onion soup. As we'll just... Oh, yes. It's nuclear, that. I might add. It's a bit <laughs> nuclear. It's a bit nuclear, but we're just going to lift this off. It's not 95 euros, this one. It's a little Look bit less. That. Mind you, the way the pound is at the moment, I don't know, but look, <laughs> there we go. It's probably about 900 quid, to be honest with you, by the time we finish this. But there you have a, a nice little classic French onion soup. Easy as that. <laughs> Matt, there you have it. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. It will be. <laughs> now, don't burn me out. Don't, don't burn your mouth. But it, okay. The way I think the way you eat French onion soup, you, you dunk, dunk first. Dunk, dunk in, allow it to soak in, and then taste. That's great. It's just sweet. It's lovely. It's lovely, isn't it? It's the caramelisation mm. of the onions. That little bit of brown sugar in there, but oh, it's a great dish. That. Classic French onion soup. There we go. Oh, right, you've got to finish that off. Um, and I'll be treating Matt to a second course of salmon and place goujons at the end of the show. And if you're wondering what to do with your remaining pumpkins, then don't miss this week's Little Mascots. And I'll be joined again after the break where Chef Atoll Kutcher will be wowing with more incredible Indian cookery. I'll see you in a bit. I'll we'll finish this first. It's lovely, isn't it? Great. Welcome back. Now, there's still loads more to come from my guest, Matt Willis. Uh, we're putting your leftover pumpkins to good use in today's little masterclass. But first, I'm here with a chef who's built up a restaurant list as long as your arm and revolutionised the way we think about Indian food in this country. It's the brilliant Atul Kutcher! <laughs> Mr Paul Ains with his hanging by, because I know you're a lover of his food as well. Oh, so what, so you, you might as well just eat here rather than go to his restaurant. Yes, exactly. it's brilliant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm thinking, you see. Exactly. So what are you going to be doing then? So, James, I'm cooking uh, fish curry, which is quite a favourite of mine. I've cooked many times yeah. for you as well, if I remember it right. But I thought I'll share this recipe. And Paul is here, so I thought, yeah, we'll show him oh, how to cook fish. All fish the way there. from Cornwall. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> right, so we're going to get on. I'm going to get on and do these clams. Now, I mentioned your restaurants as well, but one we thing we'd never really talked about, how did it all start for you, really, your, your first place? When, you know, because you look at tamarind and all that kind of stuff, where did it all start for you? So, I, uh, James, my granddad was a baker, right. and my dad had a catering business, so that's how it started from home, to be honest. And then I went to a hotel school... And then I got headhunted to come to the UK to open Tamarind. And then it's all here. So what have you got right, here? So this, is, this, is, this is a South, South Indian curry? This is a South Indian curry. Uh, yeah. And you know what I've done is I've taken flavours from four, four stroke five states of South India and kind of blended them together to make this curry. And that's why I call it Kanish, Kanishka seafood curry. Okay. Uh, because this is very typically, this is how we make it in Kanishka. And I'm starting with coconut oil, okay. because uh, in South, they would cook with coconut oil, and that's the best, you've got, that's um, the best way. Regions in India, you've got North and South, but you've got so many regions within that. Yes. <laughs> it's get confusing, right? Uh, but there are, there are, I mean, 
lots and lots of reasons. There are, there are lots and lots of reasons. So, you know, if I talked about just South India, yeah. you've got Kerala, you've got Karnataka, you've got Tamil Nadu, uh, you've got Andhra. So there are five, five or six regions. We, we break it down in North, South, East, West just to understand the cuisine. And purely because the differences between, between the cultural and the culinary ingredients are so much. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very hard to explain. So culinary-wise, I divide it into four regions and say, North India, we cook with butter. Yeah. Uh, South India, we cook with coconut oil, as I'm doing it now. Uh, and East India, we cook with mustard oil. And West India, we would cook with uh, cold-pressed sesame seed oil or rapeseed oil. Right, uh, OK. Uh, and that, each and every oil has got flavor of its own. And depending on the intensity and how much heat the oil can take, and how much flavors it can absorb from the oil, that yeah. decides the flavor profile of the dish. Yeah. But where so, are a lot of people, I mean, to explain to us what you're going on here, what, before so we... So I started with coconut oil, yeah. added mustard seeds, and as they started popping, I added garlic and ginger. I wasn't coloring them. Yeah. Just want to draw the flavor out. Then added curry leaves, right time to get the flavor, and then add shallots. Yeah. And in South India, they use more shallots than onions. Right, OK. Yeah, for some reason. Maybe they grow more. Because they're milder, or just...? I, I think... Uh, they, they are milder, that's true. But also, I think onions don't grow that well in South India. Yeah. So they have more shallows growing, so that's why they would cook with that. Now, have I got enough clams here? Because I'm getting that's bored. Enough, of, I'm getting bored of this, to be brutally honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Is this all right? You got enough? We got enough. That's enough. Chef. There you go. OK. I'll do and the rest of it. Why not? Coconut milk. Now, I know you're a big fan of Indian food as well. You've even got, you've got curries on your menus. Yeah. Just really, it's inspiring. I like. Yeah. I've never learned to cook like this, and um, and I've it's the first time I've actually seen Asol cooking like yeah. this, and I'm, I'm mesmerised. Well, I'm just really quiet watching it and how it all how it all comes together. It's yeah, it's a privilege to watch. Because it's thank you, Paul. Happy with that? It's do, you want, do you want me to get you a room? So let it, let it. <laughs> 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 I'm picking you in the middle of this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you're a bad boy. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay, so in the what fish, now? <laughs> we'll use all the beautiful fish we have. Look, can I yeah. bring this here? It'll be easier. Red mullet. Red mullet. Yeah. Three or four pieces. Paul, how many you want? Four prawns? Yeah, go on. Four on, yeah, go yeah. on. Don't be showing them scallops. Uh, I'm here as well. I, I, I'm... <laughs> oh, OK, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I quite fancy some of the wheat as well. Oh, yes, Chef. Yes, <laughs> is that, is that, I forgot. Is that all right? <laughs> all right, I you forgot. forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I was, I, I was told this is Paul Ainsworth's show. So that is... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps reminding himself of that every time he comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? We opened the gates and Paul just barged in today. I, he's not invited, I can tell <laughs> yeah, you. I'm, I'm, not every, I'm not even on the billing I'll today. I'll just put two more scallops there. <laughs> I'll just put two more scallops in there, just in the, just in the hope that he'll put it in the pan and I might get it. <laughs> so we'll uh, right. fry the fish in coconut oil itself, just to keep the same flavor. In coconut oil, right, yeah. okay. I'll put the prawns in the side because they'll keep happening. So that's just pure coconut oil? Pure coconut oil. Yeah. It is, I mean, you mentioned the south, the south of India. I mean, Goa, where I went from, the, the shrimp and the prawns are just... They're just beautiful. Oh. They're just beautiful. I don't know you've been in that neck of the woods, but they've got the rivers that you've got, the nets along the side of the riverbanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, the, yeah. The prawns are amazing. So, you know the restaurant I have in Mayfair, uh, Kanishka? That's the only restaurant where I cook with snails as well. Have you... You have snails in your menu? No. OK. No. Because they're farmed now in the UK, they're aren't they? Farmed, yeah, yeah, they're beautiful, those things. Yeah. yeah. So, James, I'll need a little bit of butter and lemon juice. Butter, there you go. Lemon juice. They're ready. Perfect, chef. And as well as that, Thank you've you. got the, the new book out as well. We got You're a book out. Busy. The book out, book is called Curries Every Day. It's a vegetarian book. Yeah. And I've taken flavors from, um, literally, from Jaipur to Japan, as I say. But all the spicy food from the different parts of the world, to be honest, just not Indian but from Malaysia, Indonesia, wherever. Yes, Chef. Thank you. You add. It's your day. Well, it's it lemon juice in? Yes, please, Chef. <laughs> there you go. And we'll add a little bit of... 
crumbs. I'm in here. I love these, though. The little brown fish. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, so I just think they're most amazing. Beautiful. We've always this got is them on in some way, shape, or form. The little brown yeah. shrimps, they're, they're delicious, yeah. aren't they? These two. Okay, we are done. Just that, let's that switch that it off. Switch pan through. of seafood there. It's lovely, isn't it? But especially with this. Look at this. Look at that. It's so quick. It comes around very quickly, Chef. And this is the thing, you can, I mean, assuming you can make the sauce with chicken if you wanted to. Easily. You don't have to do it with fish. Easily. Doesn't have to be. Not bad at this, is he? Yeah. Phenomenal. But as you said as well, how quick. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's the key to it. You don't realise that the speed of it. I mean, I see him cook quite a lot now because the, the, the way you think about Indian cookery, you just yeah. think it, it's that slow process in the pan, it develops flavors. You do get, you do need that in certain you, things. You do need that in certain things, but, but not, this... not everyone. Not, not every, every cuisine. I should say cuisines of India rather than Indian cuisine. Yeah. Because we have got so many different cultures and cuisines going on there. And we've got, and we've got to garnish it with, you've got a little bit of sorrel. This has got, this is called red amaranth as well. I it's love nice, red amaranth. Nice little leaf. And then you've got some flowers. Yes, sir. Right. What do you want, the pink ones or blue ones? Uh, blue ones, please. Matches his eyes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> that was another show. Yeah, that was a whole different thing. <laughs> it's left me scarred for life, that show as well. Oh, no. <laughs> not talking about that. No, no, you don't even want to know no, about that. No, I don't that. want to know about it. It's me and him on a beach. In a, no. Yeah. Ooh. No, no. Right, here we go. Happy All with right. that? Happy with that? So give us the name of this dish. It's called Kanishka Seafood Curry. That's all culture, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Mr. Ainsworth, bon appetit. There you go. Wow. Don't worry, Thank I will eat it much. out of the pan. <laughs> Yes, scallops. Look at that, it's actually served me in a pan, look. <laughs> no, no, I'll do that for me. That's fine, no, thank no. you very much. Keep up the good work at all. No, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Absolutely like incredible. It. It's the spices, though, don't you think? Because yeah. you do this at home and you go, how on earth do you get... You watch... I mean, I try it, you watch you and go, it's still not right, but you... It's the important bit is, is that cooking out at the very beginning, isn't it? That, that's, that, that's very important. So when you st start heating the oil, the temperature of the oil has to be just correct before the whole spices go in. And then you cook the shallots to the right degree. The, those are the two critical points. And beyond that, it's all usual stuff. It's amazing as well, just like all the flavors you've got in there, but individually you taste them all. And just like, it, it, it's the depth in yeah. 10 minutes. And have you noticed? <laughs> two pans. Mm, that's it. Two yeah. pants. That's all he's used. But yeah, I'm note. doing an apple slice. Take note, you. <laughs> and I think I'm probably going to be going through about 16. Yeah, take note. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell everybody. Yeah. Uh, right, this chat will be trying to talk to this chat dish later on in the morning. And I'll be cooking more for my guest, Matt Willis, later on at the end of the show. But join us again in a couple of minutes when we're heading out onto the drive mm. as I'm putting these two to work in a waffle van. Can't wait. You're going to like this one. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. How cute is he? I'll be making another mouth-watering dish for my guest, Matt Willis, later on in the show. And we've got an essential guide to pumpkins coming your way in this week's Little Masterclass. But first, I'm outside with chefs Paul and Atul and Ralph, and we're going to be learning more about the world of food trucks because we're also joined by Jules and James and Reggie from Otto Waffle. Welcome to the house, guys. It deserves a round of applause, this thing. Yes. Really. <laughs> uh, Jules and James, people are wondering what, what Reggie is. Reggie is this. Reggie is our... 1975 for transit. I'm glad you said that. I yeah. was going to say exactly what it was, what? really. It's pretty... <laughs> I'm so sorry. And, and, and does, it, does it get here on, is it on steam or is it had to be towed here? <laughs> do, do you, do you, how many times has 
it break down? <laughs> You've picked a bad week to ask that, because right. it, it was towed here this morning, which I, I hate to admit. Normally it drives. Right. Uh, it's driven to Sweden before. Driven um, to Sweden? Yeah. Sweden. Yeah. Wow. Funny enough, never been the same since. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's what um, did it. At the moment. So right. you're basically... We're going to get on how it all started, but I know you want to get started, so I'll let you start with your waffles and st get you started cooking course, with that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, so how did the business start, then? Because it's something that... You know, you're, you're a chef by trade. Yes. James, yes. Yeah. And then... You ended up working at an event. Yeah, so I, I trained as a chef and worked for a chef for uh, as a chef for a number of years. And me and Jules met um, when we were at, uh, at working at Wimbledon Tennis Club. Um, right. So I ran the players' restaurant, uh, the competitors' restaurant, and Jules ran the floor. Okay. Um, and we basically we worked there together in the summer for like six, seven years, and just thought. Why not do it ourselves? Let's try and do something a little bit different. Um, and we went travelling around South America, and they have like the most amazing savoury crepe and savoury waffle culture. Yeah. And no one was really doing it in the UK. And we just thought, let's let's really own it. Let's make it cool. Let's make it savoury, high end, gourmet. Well, I wanted to bring these two guys because these guys. I mean, you've you've actually built yourself a food truck, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Look love at the it. smell on his face. I love it. He's like a pig in here. Look at it. <laughs> what is it called it's for? It's brilliant. Uh, ours is called Michel Maurice. It's yeah. A, yeah. Nineteen seventy-five. Um, long wheelbase. HY van and it's brilliant. That doesn't it's a drive. Great that drives as well as this one, doesn't it? Really? Uh, drives less well than this one. <laughs> 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 Michelle Maurice goes everywhere by trailer. It, yeah. <laughs> so what are you making here then? You're basing yourself on waffles. What have we got? Sweet and savoury. So what, we're starting on our brunch one, which is James, Jules, and the giant peach. So. Um, we've got the waffle there. We're going to chuck some, a little bit of cinnamon sugar on there, just yeah. for the sweetness. Oh, if you could just grab me some, a little bit of rocket, that'd be amazing. Yeah, of course. So, again, this is like a sweet and savoury combination. It's okay. kind of our take on, like, an American brunch, but we yeah. wanted to make it a little bit more kind of high-end. Thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good assistant, yeah, honestly. Oh, he's oh, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the trouble is, James, this will be on his restaurant menu in his truck, <laughs> truck next week. Yeah. I've stolen loads we're, of his yeah, ideas. Yeah, we're just, anyway. just, he's stolen a lot of mine and all. But anyway. So this is... A vanilla cheesecake mousse that we make. A vanilla cheesecake mousse. Wow, and you're doing this is the very same thing. If people go to festivals, they can see you at festivals. This is exactly how Absolutely. you do it. This is, yeah. Right. So it's got some smoked bacon on there, these amazing caramelized brulee peaches, which falls its after for us. And then we have a rosemary infused honey. Again, just that play on sweet and savoury. Just into it. Oh, it? stop it. Pistachio crumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lovely pistachio crumb. And we finish it just with a couple of, oops, a couple of fresh berries on there as well. Oh. So after, after you've had one of this, how many calories are left from this one? For a day? Th there's only three calories in this yeah, right. one. I thought so. You need 19,000 calories each, apparently. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's maybe where I got wrong. I got the decimal point in the wrong direction. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at anyway. Look at this. Can I That's taste it. this one? All right. you you're going to have to. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass I'll a little bit on to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I love that combination. Dish. That looks ace, um, doesn't it? We've never seen that with the rocket yeah, yeah, yeah. and the sweet. Yeah, you, yeah, you will have seen. He's got the idea. He's got the idea. I tell you what, Cornwall, where we come. <laughs> what have we done? What have we done? It'll be homegrown so Cornish rocket. <laughs> You're 200 miles away. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but you've got the brand name, haven't you? We haven't quite managed to get it so far. That's delicious. Like you said, the sweet and savoury one. Like, yeah, it's it's mega, just, isn't it? It's lovely, that. And, and the, the waffle itself actually hasn't got any sugar in, so we use the same base for our sweet and our savoury waffles. Yeah. So when we do have very, very sweet toppings, it kind of balances out quite nicely with yeah. the, you know, the more savoury kind of waffle itself. Yeah. You have to try um, that. So what's next? So the next is the waffling chicken. That's a banger. <laughs> yeah. Copied? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look like that. When I, I just do that. Is this for, can I try this? This is for you. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> He's taking a photograph of this one. You yeah. can just <laughs> double blink. <laughs> you're, you're bad. <laughs> it's so, already printing at bad stuff. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> Um, where, what about the last one? What, what about the final one? What are you going to show us for the final one? So the final one is called the waffle and pajamas. So it's a sweet Ooh. waffle on our menu. So it's right. banana, peanut butter cremo, milk chocolate sauce, and honeycomb. Be. Well, you want some? Yeah, this and, is and also, you're not just that, but you're, you're, you're catering for events and stuff like that. You yeah. cater for weddings, if anybody's yes, interested in doing this. Yes, we've actually got a wedding Absolutely. tomorrow. Lots of weddings booked in. Um, weddings, bar mitzvahs, divorce parties, you anything. name it, mate, we're there. <laughs> we're there. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> divorce parties. <laughs> divorce parties, is that <laughs> what they call them now? Absolutely, I think so, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah. How, just, just look at that. How good does that look? That looks gorgeous. Ralphie, look at this. You're not getting any of this, buddy. Look at that. <laughs> Join the queue. <laughs> right, dive into this. So this is this. This is the. 
And that's what's great about waffles, isn't it? So, it's so used to just putting chocolate spreads on it and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It's just become the norm, but... Yeah, we, do, we... we ban Nutella in the restaurant. I mean, the amount of people that say, do you have any maple syrup and Nutella? It's just straight you up. You banned it? Yeah. No. Any, any squirts of cream? No. no. Any Oreos? No. No. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what we're into. Well done. No. no. Well well done. Done. Yeah, that's the one I've been looking forward try to that, the most. Try that, try that, You'll try that first. Try that. Do you want a fork? I'll have yeah. a clean one, yeah, that's great. Look at that. That is... It's all mine now. That is wicked. Thanks, thank mate. That that is well, I wish you all. Thank wicked. you for bringing this as thank well. Thank you so, you so, so much. Thanks for having us. So and, and thanks for feeding this crew as well. Because she's not a problem. The too. great thing about it, they're going to stay behind and feed the crew afterwards as well, which they're they're all very pleased about. And you, you'll get some as well. But maybe not that dessert one. But thank you very much. <laughs> Best way. to look with everything you as well. So much. It's a fantastic you. business and, yeah. and tastes thank amazing. Phenomenal. I think That's the amazing. guys are very happy as well. There you go. Right, still to come. I'll be chatting some more with my guest Matt Willis, and I'll be talking into an apple and frangipan dessert from Mr. Paul Ainsworth a little bit later. But join me again a couple of minutes when we'll be back in the kitchen for a masterclass in pumpkins that you don't want to miss. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now I'll be rustling up salmon and place goujons for my guest Matt Willis a little bit later and I'll be handing the kitchen over to chef Paul Ainsworth. That's coming up next but first it's time for this week's little masterclass and this week's masterclass is for everybody who's wondering what to do with all those pumpkins that they get left over from Halloween. So first thing is, I'm going to do basically three recipes using the same sauce. Um, in fact, make a soup out of it, but use it for various different things as well. So you, you've got to make stuff once. But first thing we do is get the pumpkin on for this. So I've just got some diced pumpkin, first of all, which I'm just going to add to our pan, leaving a little bit left over, which is that one. And then all I'm going to do is add some milk to this. So classic soup, really simple to make. It's just the vegetables, I mean, this, this way, pumpkin and milk, nothing else. But what I'm going to do while I'm waiting for this to come up to the boil is I thought I'd do a little pasta, do a little ravioli. Now, the great thing about making a little ravioli is you can take your time when you're doing this. Um, and we've got some pasta over here, classic pasta made with semolina flour, double zero flour, which you've got in here, some eggs, and you've got your classic pasta that we've got in here. So I'm going to turn this into two pasta dishes, all using this sort of sauce as well. So the first thing we want to do, really, with this, is take our pasta and put it through our roller. So I've got the here, just the standard pasta roller, and what you need to do for this is start it on a, a, its widest shape, first of all. So fire up the machine. So to start with, I'm going to roll this through our machine. Now, the key to pasta is try and use as little flour as possible because you're just drying out the pasta dough all the time. So it's a good idea to start it off in its widest setting first and then gradually get thinner and thinner. And take your time when you do this to make sure it doesn't split. If you force it through too quickly, the pasta just rips. So eventually you'll get down to almost its thinnest settings. You can almost see through it, you see? as it starts and goes through there. Now, with pasta as well, you want to get it nice and thin because the problem is with this is it does double or triple in thickness when it cooks. There we go. Wonderful. That's what, one bit. And then we can take our other bit and roll this through again. So, nice and thin. Through the roller. So often with these rollers, you've got another roller, additional roller on the top, which saves you having to hold it. We'll do with this one, but once you rolled it through like that, they look pretty good. So try and get it as thin as possible. You can see almost, you can see your hand through it. Now, once it gets to that stage, we'll then trim that off. Like that. I'm just going to leave this one. Switch that off. I'm going to leave this one for our tag the telly. Now, keep your eye on your soup over here. It doesn't take very long, so no shallots, no garlic, just all it wants is the, the milk in there. And then we can turn our attention to our pasta that we've got in here. So I'll use this one, really, and like that. So we we'll use this one for the base, and I use this one for the top. So what we can do is take a nice little cutter, and you can use a cutter or you can use a, a teaspoon, really, for this, but you want a little bit of pumpkin puree. Now, you can buy this pumpkin puree, or I've simply made some. All I've done is take some of this pumpkin and I've just pop it in a microwave for a good 10 minutes until it softens, and then I've mixed it together 
with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, but also with some amretti biscuits, because this is the key to this, is these little sweet amretti biscuits. This and pumpkin, you wouldn't believe it, go brilliantly together. So you just take this together. Now, the great thing about doing it this time of the year is that this is brilliant for Christmas. So if you've got any vegetarians in the house or you want vegetarian things for Christmas, you can do this and you can freeze it. You can freeze ravioli brilliantly. You can take this like that, do another one. So you're taking your time like that and they go in there. So nice bit of filling that we've got in here. And then we take the other bit of pasta over the top, lay that on there. And then what I tend to do is use your fingers for this one, press it around the filling, like that. Another one, another one. And then using a larger cutter, you can then turn this over and then use that as a little seal to go to seal it all in. So it locks in all the flavor. And then you step up another larger cutter and then you can use that to cut it out. So you take this, cut them out like that. You see the process of it is very simple. Lift this off, you kind of got ravioli. Like that. And then what you can do is you can take these and press it to make sure it's even thinner, like that. Now, like I was saying, these are brilliant because you can make them now and they freeze brilliantly. If you are going to freeze them, my suggestion is take the similar ingredients to what you put in the pasta. Instead of the flour, use semolina. Put that on a tray and sit these on a tray of semolina flour. And then once they're frozen, then you can put them in a bag. But make sure they're nice and sealed like that and level on a tray so they don't stick together until they are actually frozen. They'll be fine once they're frozen. But you do that, pinch it all together. Now, a similar sort of thing, which we're going to do with little tagliatelle as well. We can swap this over, change this. So often when you buy one of these, you can get an option of getting one of these as well. These are the little tagliatelle rollers. So you just fire this up. Similar thing again, we're going to use a tray. But instead for that, we'll use some of this semolina flour, which is the fine semolina. It's not polenta, by the way, so don't make the mistake that it is polenta. It's much finer. And then you can roll this through, and you end up with tagliatelle. Look. Easy as that. But you see how much... I mean, it makes a tremendous amount of pasta, just a small amount when you do it to start with. Turn that off. And then you roll it around in this semolina flour like that. You can let it dry if you wanted to. In warmer climates, we'd let it dry. But air in cupboards, let it dry. It'd take about three days to dry out, put it in a bag, you've got it done. So I'm going to serve that with a little bit of pumpkin as well to go with it. But this is now ready, because we're not far off now. So we're just going to take our blender and pop our entire pumpkin, everything, the whole lot, in here. Uh, all of it in there. And then stick it on here. While we're blending it, I've got the pumpkin seeds, which we're going to fry off in here as well. But what you want to do is pop the lid on. Now, while it's still warm, the good idea is take the vacuum side of it is. So if you've got a lid bit, remove that, because it creates a vacuum and it can go everywhere. Make sure that this is down low to start off with. Fire it up and then turn it up. Right, once that's done, you can then switch this off. You've got your nice, lovely pumpkin soup. Look at that. So, so simple, so, so easy, really, for that. I've got my pumpkin over here, which has just been, the seeds have just been sauteing off in there. <laughs> While that's happening with this, I'm just going to get another bit on for our other bit, our little tag the telly thing, using just these other bits of diced pumpkin, where you can just take it in a little bit of olive oil. So we're just going to fry that in there. So it's just it's a really nice, simple little dish, this one, with a little tagliatelle, really easy. So back over to our soup. Like I say, the great thing about this and the ravioli that we've got in here, this, once it's made, you can freeze this as well. It freezes brilliantly. But season it up, it does need to see... You, you'd be amazed how much seasoning, particularly salt, it takes. So a little bit of that. 
And then we can simply serve, we'll do our soup in this one, why not? So we can grab our little bit of soup here, like that, and then take, I mean, the, the, the texture of this is amazing as well. It's so, so simple to make, like that. I'm going to leave some of this soup because I'm going to use it for the rest of the dishes as well, remember. We've got our pumpkin over here, which is looking good. I'll bring my pan on for our dish over here. We can finish this off. So, finish off with our little soup. We've got our toasted pumpkin seeds. Like that, over the top. I've got a little bit of double cream. Take that as well. Over the top of there. And then what I do love as well, this stuff. This is pumpkin oil. If you can find this, this is amazing. Gives it a great colour with it. Look at the colour of it. Lovely bronzy colour from it as well. A little bit of pumpkin oil. Also delicious. Now, together with pumpkin, like I said, almonds work really well together, but also sage. And if you've got the opportunity to, deep fry some sage. You can pan fry it in a pan. It does a similar sort of thing. But I've got a fryer on here. We just take the sage. Don't wash it. Straight in. 160 degrees, not too hot, so you don't want them to brown. You can then... They almost go translucent, the sage, once it cooks. As soon as it goes translucent like that, we then take it out, pop it onto a tray, and there you have it, your deep-fried sage. Really simple, but make sure it is translucent before you, you take it all out, like that. And then once it's done, we can take a few of these leaves on the top like that. And there we have it. A bit, I mean, it just looks a pretty plate of food from what is just pumpkin and, uh, and milk in there. So that's your pumpkin soup. Back over here, we'll take our tagliatelle first. We'll do that one first. So we've got a nice little bit of mixture over here, just with that really nice olive oil. And then what I'm going to do is take our tagliatelle. There's plenty of salted boiling water straight in here. And with fresh pasta, it's going to take no more than about probably 30 seconds to cook. So rapidly boil it. If you are going to dry it all out, it just takes an, another, another minute, I suppose, once it's dry. OK, then what we're going to do is take our pasta, drain it straight off into our sauce, like we would do normally. You always finish the pasta in the sauce, really. Don't overcook it in the pan. And you're going to finish it off in here. Now, while that's in there, we're going to take some Parmesan cheese. Classically grate the parmesan over it. Down a bit. So parmesan cheese over the top. Again, a little bit more seasoning. Check your salt and pepper. That's that one. We can then take our beautiful pasta in here. Really simple, remember, like that. Similar garnishes if you wanted to. A little bit of Parmesan over the top. Like that. Just to keep it nice and simple. A few bits of sage. Like I say, it works really well, this. But it's entirely up to you whether you put it on. A little bit of that. You can put a little bit of lemon rind as well if you wanted to. Another thing that's great, or orange rind with this as well. But we can take some of these Amretti biscuits as well. You can put a little bit of those sprinkled on the top. And there you have another little pasta dish. Finally, for our final one, we're then going to take our ravioli. Now, because it's twice as thick ravioli, it takes a little bit longer to cook. So, straight into our pan. About a minute, 45 seconds is what you want for that. So, turn it up a little bit. While that's happening, we can just simply do our nice little sauce to go with it. A little bit of nut brown butter to go with it. And I'm still going to serve it with this sauce, like that. So, get the pan nice and hot. Ravioli's there. I feel like I'm pro proper cooking like a chef here. I'm doing this, but look, you've got a lovely little... You see the texture of the soup. It goes like this beautiful little sauce. You can leave it like that if you wanted to. But this lovely nut brown colour it tastes amazing when you get this sauce. So a nice hot pan, which is that going to be? Our pasta's not far off. And to make a little bernoisette, we take our nut brown butter, lemon. That's all you need, really, for this one. So nice hot pan. In we go with the butter now. Make it not brown. Have a little bit of lemon ready. So that is. Get the colour right. While that's happening, we then take our ravioli out. 
because it doesn't take very long. Good idea is to put the ravioli. You can see it's expanded. Look, you can see. I said to you, the pasta does expand. So the nut brown butter's done. You can see it's lovely and nut brown. Take it off to one side. Don't do this near people, but a bit of that in here. Touch your lemon. So it just stops it from cooking. That's what we want. Turn the heat off. Because we're now done. Lovely nut brown butter. You don't want too much of it, but it is fantastic with, with this. And you can take our ravioli like that. And put, you can see by just putting them on that little bit of paper, it drains off any of the excess water, which is what you want. And then you've got this nut brown butter. Just put a few little bits over the top to split it and separate it. It's wonderful, this, with, with pumpkin. If you get into the habit of learning how to do that, you can only do it with butter and lemon, but you can put things like parsley in it as well. It's a classic sort of French technique, really. Bernoisette, they call it. If you're looking at a dish that's got meunier, that's what it usually contains, that nut brown butter, that's what you're looking for. There we have it, a little masterclass on one of my favourite ingredients, the humble pumpkin. Let me see that. There we have it. Now, if there's anything you'd like to learn about, a little masterclass, then do get in touch. We'll see if we can help out right here on the show. But time now for a quick break. But join me again after the break when I'll be enjoying some stunning desserts from Mr Paul Ainsworth. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now I'll be dishing up some salmon and place goujons for my guest Matt Willis very shortly. But first, I'm here with a chef who's worked at some of the top London restaurants before deciding to follow his dream and set up shop on the Cornish coast. It's Mr Paul Ainsworth. Yeah. How are you doing, fella? Really good. Good, How good, are you, good. Mate? You very okay? good, very You're good. Right. right, what are we going to be doing then? What, what's the, a dessert for you? It's yes. quite unusual. In fact, I think this is the first dessert I've ever done. OK. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So, yeah, we're going to do an apple and frangipan slice. All right. Big dollop of clotted cream. Sounds pretty good. That's right. the Cornish element to it. That's the Cornish it? element to it. I thought there might be something in there. Yeah. <laughs> right, Always. Got it. So what, what are we starting off with? Then? Right, we're going to make the frangipan. And normal, as you know, frangipan, butter and ground almonds. OK. What we're doing to this is we browned the butter and then set it again. So it's to really enhance that like, nice okay. nuttiness, that depth of flavour. Yeah. We're still going to have ground almonds, because yeah. that gives it the body, but also some hazelnuts. OK. All right? Orange zest, vanilla, and I've got here a gorgeous amaretto. OK. All right? No so problem. the first thing... All right, I'll let you crack on and do that, then. Now, James, you can do this in a um, food processor, like I'm yep. doing, or, like, a, a mixer. But okay. both are good. You just want to basically so blitz. So when you're on about the browning butter, have you taken yeah. that to nut brown and then just cool it? Is that's that it. what you've done? Exactly that. All, that's all we've done, is... Um, and as you know, those milk solids caramelise, goes nice and nutty, gives oh, you a lovely flavour. So sugar, all right. Orange zest, yeah, thank yeah. you. I've got orange zest going in there. And the orange just works really well with this dish, because in a bit I'm going to show you how we glaze this slice. So the, the apples that you're using for this, I'll get on and peel a, peel a few yeah. apples. You're just going to use... These are, these are pink lady apples. Pink lady apples, yeah. <laughs> And these are used a lot in predominantly in cooking as well, because I use these for, for tarts tan. They're a fantastic apple that holds well together. That's right. Nice and sweet, but you get the soft flavour as well. Exactly that, well, James. As, that. as you just said, they hold their heat. Yeah. All right? And there it is. Done. If you just... Like, the smell of that with the orange, the vanilla... Yeah, it's all right. it's lovely. So you're not used all that flour, then? No. Just a little pinch just to kind of bring it back together because okay. you've got to like with the eggs. So the next thing is apples, just like what you've done there, James. Yeah. Peeling it round so you get that nice kind of... Um, you don't lose the shape of the apple. Yeah. And then simply cut them in half, take out the core, and then thin slices just like that. Oh, so all you've done with that is... Oh, I see what you've done. Yeah. I'll core it and then yeah. thinly slice it. Yeah, them. absolutely. Right. OK, right. I'll lose this out of the way. Now on to the next part. Do you want me to get this just sugar on? your knife. I can't hang believe on, it. I, I can't... Wanna, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, I'll, I've been waiting for this moment my whole culinary career. What? Okay. This, this bit or this no, bit? No, no, this bit. All right? Oh. So, obviously, I'm always, you know, in your presence. When you're, I was, you're younger than me. When I was 10 and you were on uh, Ready, Steady, Cook. You're right. James Martin, I want it. The viewers want it. Could you make me some spun sugar? Please. 
Yes. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We are adding that to the uh, list of career highs. <laughs> do you know what? I, I, get, I get the list of recipes that we're, we're going to do, but you, you, were you were 10 when I was on Ready, Steady, Cook. Yeah. So I thought, I'd do, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in the house, but I'll dig it out. But look, we've got our, we've got our sugar. Yeah. Just normal cast sugar in the pan. Now, usually I'm up against Brian Turner at this point and everything's sweating and the timer's going off. But I thought I'd dig this thing out. Just, yeah. Just, this, this thing. <laughs> this is genuinely, genuinely the one. Uh, people think I used to buy these, and uh, I genuinely, this, because I worked in a hotel, this was an old bed sheet. I would then draw on it with a pen, and this is genuinely, genuinely the original. Oh uh, do you know the what? Original. What's that? Getting it's bringing back memories, isn't it? Having my, having my daughter, winning a Michelin star, and not only are you going to do spun sugar, you're wearing the bandana. Look at that, exactly. I mean, what People is... are going to be switching on going, <laughs> he's let himself go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never hit a guest before. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've got hot, okay, I've listened, I've got That'll hot. That'll be in the express. There you go, another one. <laughs> yeah, I've officially punched my guest. I'm going to do it again. So, there yeah, we go. hang on. <laughs> So here, James, I'm just slicing this apple really nice and thin. Do you thin. know what people say about me? They said I look like the fat James Blunt. The fat James yeah, Blunt? I thought it was a bit out of order, but there, there you go. I'm going to... She'll take that and to leave it to one side. We shall put that there next to the next to the final dish. Is that right? I can't believe it. So there you go. I mean, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> OK. We're just going to take our... We've got, so, short but shop brought puff pastry, yeah. all right? So you want the all butter, really, 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 really good quality, OK? We're just going to take, before we do it, James, just take one of our apples, put it in the middle like that, OK? And then just literally make a mark each side, all right? OK? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Then brush down either side, Yeah. all right? OK? Can you finish with this now? No, can I just have a little glug of that? Not, not much, just in the apricot jam, which I'll come on to and talk about. What is this that you're putting in here? What is that it? is amaretto. Is it? Yeah. All right. Right, there's your, your, your caramelised sugar, which is in here. The key to this is not overcook it. If you overcook it, it goes slightly bitter. Uh, that's what you want. So if you're doing this, usually you put water in it. You can do it like I'm doing with raw sugar in the pan. The most important bit is the pan's clean and the sugar's clean. So if you're doing this, no bits of tea and coffee stains in it. And make sure the sugar is absolutely clean, like that. And make sure it's nice and clean like that. And as soon as you get all the sugar dissolved, that's when you take it off the heat and just cool it down. I've got a pan on here. Sorry, this is your cooking segment, sorry. No, but Matt, just I just put that I, in I, And that leads to one side. That's Meanwhile, I've got you to do it. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> over there. So I've got that frangipan. You see, you've got all the lovely texture of the hazelnuts, and you just simply put your apples on like that all the way along. Right. So these are all I got you, so it sits in the middle. It sits in the middle, absolutely. I've got you. All right. So I'll cool this down a little bit. Now, do you want the full-on, do you want the full-on spun sugar, or do you want the sugar twists? Do you want, what do you want? I want what the nation want. Oh. <laughs> I just want to see you just, I want, I want it when it's all spun and lovely, like, like almost like candy floss. Yeah, all right, all right. we'll get that, yeah. Okay. Now, just here, James, yeah. I'm just going to glaze the outside. And you know what's going to happen here. Like, you've made the size. That's going to rise in the oven when we bake it. And you put this into the oven for 35 minutes, 40 minutes, until that pastry is beautifully crisp. The apples are cooked. Right, so this sugar's now ready for your candy floss. Yeah. So I find the key to this, really, when you're doing this sort of spun sugar work, you need to be tall. Tall? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're not tall, you need to stand on a stool. <laughs> Otherwise, you bit, end up as a bit... It's a dog air, cat air, carpet, this kind of stuff. But you spin it over your steel like that. Yes! Yes, it's going all over my floor. Yes, yeah. Look at that. So, look... <laughs> so, all over, like that. You do need to be tall, don't you? I told you you do need yeah, to be tall. Yeah, be absolutely rubbish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Thank you. Look at that. Happy with that? Look at that. <laughs> right, just get on and do finish yes. the apple tart. Lovely. Right. 
So ordinarily, we put that into the fridge now for 10, 20 minutes. Let that set, James, and then again. Fish I'm listening. Egg I'm just in my own little world over here. I'm just going to. Yeah, you're going to do some more. Yeah, I'm just going to do some little sugar twists. Can Go you on, do man. me the? Yeah, can you do me the springs next? Please? Yeah, I'm you're happening the springs. It's happening. Right. All right. Here we go. Into the oven. 35, 40 minutes, 180. Until you get... Now, what I do want to mention, on a serious note, is yeah. that you do you do so much work for charity. I know you do. Yeah. Uh, you've run the marathon and stuff like that. You've managed to get me to put my hand in my pocket and sponsor for it. One thing that's amazing, you do this amazing stuff for, for Cornish Air Ambulance, which yeah. I, I know is you, you're hugely passionate about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like, like I say, you know, we've both got a mutual friend, Angela, her husband, Neil, yeah. with the London Air Ambulance. It's phenomenal what they yeah. do, so... So, are you ready? Right, ready? yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Honestly, I'm, I'm having the best day of my life. <laughs> yes, you just get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, and now... Look at this, yeah. James. We just take that lovely... All I've got here is apricot jam, which I've just melted in the pan with People some vanilla. People are not interested, mate. They're all more interested in, in this. Yeah. They're more interested in, in this. In the... Uh... They're not interested in you at the moment. They're interested <laughs> in this. <laughs> yeah. Go on, carry on. What are you doing? Oh, glazing it. This glazing is the apricot yeah. glaze with a little, yeah. bit of, little bit of... Amaretto, amaretto and vanilla. And that's just a really good quality, shop-bought apricot jam. We we'll just do one. This is this is when you get a bit more confidence. This is before you crash and burn. This one. Yeah. You take yourself a rolling pin, but it's got to be the old granny's rolling pin. The ones that got you know that, that have got proper grease on it over the years. It can't be the modern ones that are out of balsa wood. You know those. But you want to take a little bit of your rolling pin, and you can then take this. I'm actually sat here enjoying myself. I know you are. That's why I. Yeah. That's why I uh, you just went for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I went for it. Now, this is optional extra. Hey, look, 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 look. Yeah, look at it, look at it. Gold leaf? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Cornish gold leaf? Corn this is Cornish as well. Come on, it's not yeah. I, I need my glasses <laughs> on for this. I, you're not telling me Cornwall's got a gold mine. <laughs> Where is that from? It's a part of Cornwall. No, it's not from Cornwall. It's... <laughs> Cheshire. <laughs> I don't know whether Cheshire has a gold mine, to be honest with you. Gold leaf, this right. is... This, you've changed. One last thing. You've right. changed. Forget you used to be your... to 99 and Flakes. Forget you were, your Cornetto's fancy... was your... Viennetta was as elaborate as it got. fancy dessert ones. Right, so you've made this. April... Um, April. April. Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? April. April. <laughs> <laughs> you've got your apple, frangipan and apricot slice. Yeah. Your sponge sugar and gold leaf, optional extra. But there's one perfect... Can I just say the sponge sugar's not really... An option extra. It's a simply fact. You've just put about 18 quid, 80 quids with a gold leaf on it. Because <laughs> it's, you know... It's not because it's, it's me your, and it's my house. house. So I don't use gold leaf. It's your house. <laughs> right, while yeah. I'm putting this in, you, you explain to what we got in here. Sim <laughs> Apple, frangipan slice, hazelnuts and apricot jam. With a cup of tea. With a cup of tea. Look at that. Does that look all right? That looks absolutely delightful. Looks the right colour as well. All right. Happy with that? But most of all... I got to see you in person spin sugar. Don't worry. And you're the, really good at it. The invoice will be there by the time you get back to Cornwall. Anyway, Paul Ains with everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
you go. Apple and frangipan slice, Cornish clotted cream. Cornish clotted cream. All right. Cornish gold leaf. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Can Cup I move this out of the way? Yes. And I can have a taste of this. <laughs> go for it. There we go. Right. Let's have a taste of this thing. So are you serving it warm or are you serving it cold? What's yeah, the uh, idea? Do you know what? However you want it. And if you don't want the clotted cream, single cream, vanilla ice cream, whatever you want. I'll tell you what, I'm interested in this this frangipan idea with this nut brown butter sounds yeah, pretty good. And the hazelnuts. Right. Mm. All right. It changes the taste of it though, doesn't it? Yeah, big time. It's not you're not changing the recipe, you just, you know, when you pick up things like we we use brown butter so much, whether it's baking fish. It's great that it does change the flavour, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Massively. Yeah, just to kind of Great dish, that. Becomes less of a texture and actually has a real lovely flavour. Great dish, that. Mr Paul Ains with everybody. Nice. How good was that? You gonna stick around? Yes, mate. Yes. You're sticking around for the rest yeah. of the show as well? I'll teach you I'm how to I'm not even do. meant to be here. I snuck him. No, no, exactly. <laughs> I was wondering. We didn't even invite him when he turned up. But anyway, uh, we've still got time for one more final course, uh, course. So join me again after the break where we'll be treating Matt Willis to a show-stopping fish dish at the end of the show. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Sadly, to the last part of the show. Yeah. They're still enjoying those waffles, though. But I'm back here in the kitchen with the one and only Matt Willis, Atul Kutcher and Paul Ainsworth. Yeah. And we're going to do, uh, well, fish and chips without the chips, really. This is goujons. That's all right. Fantastic. So I thought, Sounds delicious. I, we're just going to do a sip I know you love your place. So. I do. So we've got Very a whole place so. over here, beautiful whole place. Uh, this gentleman's brought it up from Cornwall. So basically, you just, nature's amazing. Go to your little line. See the little line on the fish yeah. like that? Um, you follow that little line. Now, on a flat fish, there's four fillets. On a round fish like salmon, there's two fillets. But you'll know that now you've got into fishing, because apparently you're a fisherman now. I do. I love fishing. Is yeah, that the release away from the house? Do you know what I used to do it as a kid? And then really? I, I haven't been for years. And then for Father's Day this year, I took my dad and, um, and my kids came. And it was just an amazing time. It was just the best little day out. So um, I then went and went a bit nuts and bought everything I possibly could to do yep. fishing. <laughs> so I've got more gear than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> yeah, seven bags, you know, but loads you did, of stuff. you did the same, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love He's fishing. recently bought me this... Uh, he bought me this, this present arrived for my, for my birthday, and he, this arrived through the post. I think, what on earth is this? This box, this is a different level. Now you've got all the gear, you haven't got this, you make your own flies. What? You're making your own <laughs> really? flies. Really? Wow, nice. And he's... As much as I hate to say it, he's kind of whatever he does like that, he's really good at. So I thought right. this has got his name all over it. Absolutely. Like, making your own flies. Uh, it's stumped me. I haven't caught a damn thing with my own flies. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not a damn thing, to be honest with you. That's think... the method behind my madness. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got a nice little bit. So, like I said, four fillets on a round fish like that, uh, on a flat fish. Uh, uh, two on a round fish. So we're just going to take our nice fillets like that. I'm going to skin them, and that's that one done. We'll get this out of the way, wow. like that. So, I mean, we talked about your acting career as well, but those people who are just getting up, we've got to mention this, this new play that you're involved in, because it's, it's, it's been hugely successful. It's now a fourth generation of the cast yeah. as well. So tell us about the play, and where is it, and when can people see it, and, you know, how um, are you going to be doing it for? We are on at the Criterion Theatre in Piccadilly Circus, and it's... Um, we're on till, I think we're on till January the 8th. Right. So, um, and we're on every night apart from Monday night. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Because you, you, you do, the, do you, I'm sure you do the matinees as well. Yeah, we do two on a Saturday, two on a Sunday. Um, but I love that. I love being in it. You know, I, I really do, genuinely. It's like working in the kitchen. You've got two services, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and sometimes the time in between, you're just like, I want to get back on, you know, I don't really want to be hanging around. So we mentioned the fact that, you know, it's just... Well, Laura Whitmore, you can tell, tell us who, who's in it. You've got the, the four of you in it. Yes. Uh, give us a little brief of the storyline. These people are just waking up. So it's, 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 it's me, it's Laura Whitmore, um, Tamsin Carroll and Felix Scott. They're all incredible actors. And, um, and basically, it's, just, it's, it's a dinner party. It's four of us. Um, I turn up to a dinner party at, um, at Sam and Jenny's house. And, um, yeah. and they let us know that they've possibly got a ghost in the house. And then some spooky stuff happens. You <laughs> Does know. that get... Do, they, do the audience get involved in that? I mean, shoot, they're freaking out as well a little bit, I Yeah, I mean, they... Um, our job is to leave them terrified, you know, so it's... Um, <laughs> and, uh, and we take that very, very seriously, yeah. you know. But I love it. I love the reaction from the crowd, you know. And there's little moments in between, like, a scene change, because we stay in the same room, but then there's moments when there's a, when there's a change of, of scene. So, um, and I get to kind of witness the audience talking. 
and it's so fun to listen to them going, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, and they, um, and they really jump out of their skin. It's a bit jumpy, but it's so, it's so well written there, that's quite easy. You know, the words kind of do it for you. not far from Theatre London, no. is it, really? I'm just worried if the ghost will come to my restaurant now. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're, you're in amongst yeah. it all, aren't you? Ready? You're, you're I'm, quite... I'm not very far, so I was just telling Matt that, yeah, just, I guess, probably can, 10 minutes, I can walk to you. Great, yeah. brilliant, come down. I'll, I'll bring a takeaway. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're starving, this is, this is the way to get yeah. a table, to be honest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Both of them, it's impossible to get a table in there. Oh, no. Really? <laughs> right, we're always looking for somewhere in between shows on a Saturday, so I might have that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly, so I'm just yeah. going to show you this. This is, the, this is called a pane. So when, when you're actually going to chef to pane anything, it's, it's flour, egg and breadcrumbs. So seasoned flour. Okay. You take your, your place fillets like that and you pop it in the flour. Dust it, take out only the excess, really, and then into the egg. So what you're doing is creating the flour first, the egg's the glue... Right. ..that binds it all together, and then these are called panko crumbs. So the panko crumbs are a sort of a Japanese-style crumb, as opposed to a normal bread crumb, which you can use, Paul. Yeah, you? absolutely. Which are fine, but you've got to really dry them out, I think. That The problem is with bread crumbs, they're a bit wet. What these do is they, they dry them out, and then they produce these really fine crumbs. If you want to taste those, but they're... They're really dry. Gives a nice yeah. crispy really... edge then. They're really dry. It's like on a, like on a, on a cat soup, I kind know. Of. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what it is. It's the same yeah. ones that they use, yeah. And then you take these and you roll them around in the egg, and then these goes into the these go into the crumb, and you get these amazing sort of breadcrumbs in there. So Paul, you can explain what you've been going on and over there Absolutely. with your simple little. You ever mayonnaise. made mayonnaise, Matt? I have, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they are. So it's just literally, we've done egg yolks, right? Uh, some vinegar, Dijon mustard. Basically, blitz that in the machine until you kind of it basically emulsifies, and then right. just add in a really neutral oil. You know, an oil that kind of doesn't have any flavour, and just get it nice and thick. It's usually veg Salt, oil pepper. or a little bit of grape oil. Isn't yeah, it? grape oil. Um, you can make rapeseed oil. Um, right. I tend to kind of go half and half because rapeseed's quite strong. Right. Um, that you can get olive oil mayonnaises and stuff. But yeah, yeah because then with this, this sauce, you're going to add flavour to it. Great. Now, we, we talked about the theatre and stuff that you're doing currently at the moment, but I've got to t talk to you about the couple of bits and pieces with people seeing you on TV with as well. I'm a celebrity. Why? Why? A very good question. What, why? What, what, why? Um, why would you want to put yourself through that? Um, honest answer? Yeah. I had an album out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had a solo record out, and they were like, how are we going to promote that. this album? Proper how, about, how about going on prime time television every night? I was like, great, that sounds like a winner. But, um, but you know what? I had a great time. I'd never really... I'd never done any camping before or anything really outdoorsy. I love it. He's never um, done camping. It's hardly camping, though. Exactly, it? exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I'd never been, I'd never done anything like that. So I was like, I was sleeping outdoors, I slept great, woke up when the sun came up, it was lovely. You know, and then apart from that, you had to eat bugs and do horrible things. Right. Well, you did all yeah. right about it, though, didn't you? That's the thing. It did, did really well from it. And, and yeah. I've got to mention, I mean, one of our, I suppose, our chef's favourite sort of. Programs as well. It's, it's got to be Gogglebox. I mean, that yeah. is just that must have been so fun. fun. I mean, to do. I was so pleased to be asked because I, I don't watch much television, if I'm honest, because everything I do is in the evening. So I'm I'm very rarely in to watch TV. But then, and I think the chefs are the same. You don't really watch much TV, but that's one of yeah. the things that. Yeah. And yeah. and so I tend to watch. I like watching other people watch TV. But I'm one of those annoying people normally when I'm watching telly. Who's like shh, shh. You know, when people are talking during the programme, oh, what are you doing? Sush, you talk afterwards. You know, but this year, we're encouraged to talk over it. <laughs> and I've got to mention that we, we mentioned the theatre, we mentioned that. We, we've got to mention the band. Do, do, you, do you, Is it something you... Do you want to leave the door open and think you never know? I think it's... Uh, Buster will always be a band, you know. We're kind of... We're kind of... I say adults in a very loose term, but we're kind of... You know, we're grown up enough to know that we can do other things and kind of go off and do our, our lives and then... Once we press that button, um, it's the, the busted panic button. Yeah. It kind of all comes together, and and I think that's where we're at right now. We're kind of we're kind of talking about what would that be? What would another busted record be? What would right. what would busted want to do right well, now? Well, best to look with everything as well. But Thanks look, we've very got much. Nice oh my god, look at that! Nice Great. little goujons that suddenly appear from anywhere. We've got a, we've got the little grater there. The 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 um, the lemon zest grater. No, I have I've not. I've got one in here. So there we go. I'm just going to put this. So we've got a nice little tartar sauce. You can explain what you've got in there. When we yeah. I'll put a little bit of zest over the top. So, to that mayonnaise, Matt, I've added capers, shallot, gherkins. So you've kind of got salty acidity. We've got some beautiful fresh parsley, dill, squeeze a lemon, shallot. 
Fantastic. So that looks loads of texture, and chunky and nice to I'm going to let you put them on yeah. there as a Michelin okay. sort of styley. Uh, and then I'm going <laughs> to... At all. To be honest, it's come a lot later yeah. in the programme. <laughs> than normally, normally he bashes me with that one about 30 seconds in. <laughs> I am not. And if you're wondering why everybody appears to look as if, uh, as if they're in the Antarctic, I've genuinely got the heating on in here. <laughs> You've all no, got the jackets on. No, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Typical northerner. Turn the temperature down a little yeah. bit. Turn it down yeah. a little bit. Right. right, I'm going to make a little bit of French dressing because he couldn't be bothered. I did ask him to make it, but he can't be bothered to do it. But we've just got a nice little bit of mustard, a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, and a little bit of white wine vinegar. Um, and then we've got the classic French dressing which we've got in here. We've got some beautiful watercress, because where we are, we mentioned fishing. Wow. This area is famous for its watercress, famous for its trout, famous for that kind of stuff. We've got some beautiful fresh watercress. I'll just yeah. get rid of the water, like that. All the chalk streams that you get from amazing watercress as well. And we just take our watercress, pop it in here, and we can just do a nice little push your watercress on the side with the goujons. Yeah. With a knife. That looks brilliant. You wedge your lemon. And jobs are good, isn't it, really? Yeah. There you have it. Yeah. Goujons. Easy as that. Out of salmon. A little bit of place with homemade tartar sauce and some wedges. Michelin star wedges of lemon. <laughs> At all. <laughs> Chef of the year wedges of lemon. <laughs> 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 Right, I'll put these off. Bit for you. Lovely, thank bit you. Bit for me. And you get that bit. Oh, oh lovely, look at that. Dive into there that. Go. So what do you think of those? Dunk them in. A little bit of the... Just to get the board. Hands are a bit. I think hands are better, A little yeah. bit of lemon to go with it. I mean, classic goujons are race, aren't they? Oh, that's great. Mm. It's amazing. Oh, it's delicious, isn't it? Hello. And like I said, the mayonnaise is so simple to make. Yeah. Oh. That's the thing. That's great. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Well, best of luck with everything you're doing as well. And like I said, Thank you very much. Yeah, the theatre's going amazing for you. Best of luck. We hope to see you on stage very soon as well. Cheers, mate. Thank you very Take much. Care. Good to be here. Uh, that's you. it. That's all we've got time for today. A massive thank you to all my guests, Asshole Kutcher, Paul Ains, with, of course, the brilliant Matt Willis. Yay! Cheers, guys. Now, we'll see you back here at the same time next Saturday morning. That is my house. When I'll be joined by chefs Mike Reed, Sally A.B., Daniel Galmish, and the one and only Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen will be here. Ooh. Better get dusting. Right, there you go. And we'll take a... <laughs> Until then, take care. Turn the eating on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs> the heating is on. <laughs>